hey fellas, y'all must have really been making good time because y'all beat me down here. I was honestly trying to get out here at daybreak so that uh, I could do a little fishing. I brought a fishing pole. Back there on the southern boundary of this property is a flood control lake that failed immensely and we had water flooded all up in the dry creek we just crossed. Um, nice bass in that pond though, by the way. So I'm gonna get over there and do a little fishing, I think. Uh, got a feeder to fill up here. Got a great shady, uh, let me spin you guys around. Some of you guys have seen other videos, but look how nicely it's growing in. We call it the yurt. Our buddy Colin made it. And uh, it's made out of indoor outdoor carpet, PVC, a little plastic. It's massive in there and it's really nice and shady now. Everything's grown up really pretty. So, just spun around. So today I've got a couple of goals. Um, I wanna get this massive 600 pound feeder filled up with roasted soybeans and corn. It's a mix that they make at Collin County Feed in McKinney. We're gonna get that guy filled up, new battery in it, test it out, put some new game cameras out, and uh, we're gonna move, we're, we're really moving away from feeders. I got nothing against feeders. I've used them most of my life. Uh, it's a thing in Oklahoma and Texas. Um, we've got so much land and the animals just walk willy nilly that you really can't pattern deer very effectively down here. Uh, if y'all have never been to Texas or Oklahoma, it's, it's massive. Um, and that's one of the reasons we do feeders. The other thing is we, we spin soybean, roasted soybean, and that's a great protein source. So believe it or not, most of the time the deer don't come into the feeders. They have so much browse. And then in the colder months, when it's really hard on the deer, we will dump tons of feed out to sustain them. So it's kind of a dual purpose. It's an attractant, absolutely. But it's also a supplemental feed for the deer herd during the cold months. We've moved into food plots and we're adding food plots and we're growing more crops and grains. And so that's kind of the direction we're headed into. But we'll still have you know one of these big guys to drop basically feed is what it is um, we're also going to set up two feeders one's already established but we've got a brand new little 30 35 acre patch we're going to set up and we're going to do a little fishing all right i'm going to take you along with me as best i can hope you all are doing well so this is that stuff i get at collin county feed uh in mckinney off highway five it comes in 50 pound bags and it's i think 10 bucks a bag half roasted soybean half corn it's worth every penny So guys, I put eight bags in there. At 50 pounds a bag, that's 400 pounds, and it had about 25 pounds in it. It was still spinning. I'm gonna put a fresh battery in it, reprogram the timer. This is the only feeder that's gonna be spinning on this property until probably, maybe all year. I'm trying to wean us off of feeders and move more towards food plots and mineral licks and stuff like that. More natural, I guess. I love feeders, I got nothing against them. It's a southern thing, I guess. But um, I just think it's, it's a different way to hunt, you know, when you're not leaning on a feeder as much. And uh, 
yeah so that's kind of what we're doing but you know in the in the deer hunting community the hunting community at large we really need to be supportive of everybody you know whether they're gun hunting crossbow hunting longbow hunting over feeders over food plots over an apple orchard we just need to really support each other because there's so many people out there trying to destroy um what we love to do which is be out in the woods and deer hunt bow hunt hog hunt elk hunt um just kind of keep that in mind you know before you bow up and start coming at somebody if you're going to come at them come correct you know just remember if they're in the bow hunting community they're brother or sister uh so there's lots of different ways to do it god loves wondrous variety as long as it's ethical and legal good to go baby all right we're done here i'm gonna tweak on the box and put a battery in it and get it running change out the game camera card and then we're gonna go climb a hill and get over to another food plot that's up on a little plateau all right hey guys i wanted to bring you back for a minute uh, i didn't really want to show you you know me programming this and putting a new battery in it but a lot of people think these uh these game winners uh and the the timers and the batteries and all this stuff you can get at academy it's you know it's no good you got to spend 500 bucks on your parts or just as junk guys this system has been out here for a few years and it's nothing fancy i mean it's plugged in there uh solar cable solar charger cables are run through this conduit so the coons can't eat them that's our little solar charger it ain't nothing major i mean that's it right now that's uh mid-morning sun and in texas and oklahoma that's where the evening sun is so that little bad boy gets a good charge here's what i wanted to show you being in the field all that time i opened her up look see that battery indicator how about that there's really nothing for me to do there's really nothing for me to do other than program when do i want this thing spinning and just for kicks and grins we're going to put a new camera out here and we're going to uh set it to spin in the mornings and the evenings i don't know why but in this part of oklahoma on this ranch morning deer hunting it's just terrible i i don't know why i couldn't tell you evening is gangbusters this location is our number one producing stand we have just tons of deer here so this year with this one feeder spinning on the property we'll pull deer in from every different direction across the food plots and across ambush stands and down trails and we're going to be trying to do more ambush hunting and uh kind of come and correct with our methodology we wanted to use so it should be fun this year but um yeah this is definitely probably one of the best stands and again in that mid-morning sun remember the yurt's right there it's just uh it's an awesome setup guys we go about 200 yards through those woods and we'll reach the flood control lake and let the fishing commence it's really musty down here too this rain you can see has really caused the uh, the water level to come up So there you go. There's a speak of the devil. There's one of our snakes right there. 
don't know if you can see it very well. He's coming over to see what the ruckus is. This is that little Academy feeder I was telling you about, this low boy. It's about $200. It holds two or 300 pounds of corn. Uh, this box right here holds the battery and the controller. This is solid as a truck tire, man, this cage. It's on skids. You put four pegs in the ground and it, it holds it in place. And uh, it's got a built-in solar charger. Everything's through conduit. It's got a tight seal. We've never had anything mold or mildew in it. These things are just workhorses. They come unassembled, but it's a good quality kit. So if you're looking for a $200 feeder, take you about two hours to put it together. I've got a couple of these and I wish I had a dozen. But... what we call the East 40. Here's a feeder. That's a 12 volt system. Back over there, I don't know if you can see it, there's stuff on the ground. That's where we'll put like three hay bales with a pop-up in the middle. It's about a 30, 35 yard shot over here. It's uh, the deer come in from this area and from this area. And there's a road maybe 200 yards back there. And then that place that I set up just a few minutes ago that had all the persimmon trees, it's over that way. And then right there is a tree stand. And it's about from right there, it's about a 25 yard shot. And that's where I hunt with my longbow. Now this is, this just goes to show you, this is how weird it is. I don't know why I was doing an extreme close up. All of this land's pasture land all around here. There's a big pond over there and then a bunch of tree lots and there's more deer here there'll be 20 or 30 doe at one time in three different herds four different herds moving in in 15 minutes right around twilight it's crazy but i would have never guessed that this pasture would have produced that kind of traffic they just they're pulled in from all different directions and roasted soybeans they really love them they come into them um, even if we never hunt over here we'll put out See, 300 times 1,200 pounds of soybeans, roasted soybeans for them in a year. Over there is a pretty nice little pond with fresh water. And uh, this is just a gorgeous spot. I, I would have never believed that we'll get 20 or 30 does in here at one time, almost trotting in here. Um, 
I would have thought we had to be in the deeper woods to get big bucks coming in. Um, but they love this edge with this pasture land. I guess they can see and they feel safe. We'll do some video hunts. We'll video some hunts for you this year at this location. But this is one of my favorite spots. And my daughter and a buddy of mine, Wes, tear it up over here. Um, they use crossbows, by the way, so they can get a 30-yard shot pretty, pretty ethically. I hunt up in that tree, and I do a 18, 15 yard shot when they're walking by. So yeah, this is our last stop for today. Uh, now I'm gonna try to rinse all the bug bites and insects off my uh, arms and strip down to my skivvies and drive home for two and a half hours. All right guys, be well. May God keep and bless you and may he cause his face to shine upon you and your family. And be safe in the woods, guys. All right.